Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I've got a confession to make to you guys. So I've got this little fetish I've had a problem with for a while, and um, I don't know, I haven't known how to tell you guys about this. So I thought maybe i just best come right straight out into the open. So uh, here it is. I have this addiction, and I am addicted to dial indicators yes dial indicators folks i have more dial indicators than you can imagine i can't pass up a dial indicator without buying it and i tell you folks these aren't even all my dial indicators so i struggled what to do about this affliction dial indicators well, what I came up with is, hey, why not a way to store them better? Yes, if you have an addiction, store them better. That's what I say, at least if it comes to dial indicators. So, Anyways, what I did is I whipped this up because I do have quite a few dial indicators, as you can see. And like I say, seriously, joking aside, this is not all of them. I sort of inherited quite a few of them from a past hobby, if you will. So I used to be into astrophotography, and this is just just one example and what you would do is take this and, and this is sort of how I got into machining so this is sort of a little interesting sidebar maybe let me clear some of this stuff out of the way for a second uh, because this is way back before 3d printing days 3d printers even existed and what I would do is I would machine mounts to attach say a dial indicator to a telescope like this and this would push against the plate that would be attached here and you see this had a really super fine tuning knob. So you see on, on most higher end telescopes you'll have a rough focus and then a fine focus. And actually a lot of them I had had um, uh, stepper motors. And this is sort of where I got acclimated to controllers and stepper motors is way back in the day controlling telescope focus because what I would do is have a camera attached to this side and I would have a Hartman grating attached to this side. I actually wrote a book. Um, I'll put the link to it below if you're interested on Hartman gratings uh, for fine focusing. And then what would happen is the computer would read the, the information from the camera and measure the spikes from the Hartman graph and then adjust it. And then what would happen is I you know I could measure it on here so I could at least in you know the next time around get rather close now it is also heat specific this focusing mechanism and again this is an interesting sidebar so I used to record the the measurement here towards the temperature outside and usually you do this in winter time so it's pretty freaking cold here in Michigan so anyways this is how I ended up with a lot of these and like I say you can get a few more but you get the idea so what I did is I decided I needed a you know good way to store these. So what I did is I whipped this up uh, in OpenSCAD and printed it out. And what happens is um, now this one this one was my second prototype. The first one kind of failed miserably. The I'm trying to get the expansion on the holes right. So the one I put up on Thingiverse will be a little bit tighter than this one. And long story short, what happens is these just sit in here like this and then uh, mount onto a pegboard. And then so you can set, set these down here. And I totally screwed this up because you can't do that. That doesn't work like that. I didn't think of that. Oh, so, so you guys are still there? How, how long have you been there? Um, well... Actually, you got to see in real time sort of a discovery I made. So this is one of those projects that has turned from something that was supposed to be real simple, like a five-minute project, into, well, a ton of man hours. So, you know, I really started out struggling with this because I, I came up, you know, I was going to do this version. And uh, I like this version, but then I miscalculated some of the hole sizes uh, in plastic construction because I wanted it tight. Now, I, I came up with a trick for that, uh, but I'll share that in a minute. So, and then also, then once I figured that out, sort of, then I ran into the problem of them bumping into one another because, uh, obviously, you know, I didn't take into account this length. I thought I'd got enough far enough. Um, and so, anyways, I finally ended up on this one. Now, part of this I, I i'm also stickler for for aesthetics and, and and design thinking and building something 
And so, you know, this one, you know, so one of the things, as you recall, I started out with four, and I decided, well, I'm going to have to change this around a little bit. So I came up with this extra space, so I decided to add five. But then I miscalculated on the fact of um, that one's a little bit too thick. So I got this one, and then I got this one, and they don't fit. So I thought I could get it in there. I did some rough measuring, and I was wrong. Sorry, Norm Mavrams. Uh, so again, that one went by the wayside. Then I ended up with this one. This one is actually pretty good. This one I think will be will be usable at the end of the day. Um, so again, I can put my meters there. They are a little bit tight in here, but they do fit. And the one I'm going to put up on Thingiverse, I'm going to I'm going to move this out. I'm going to add like another two millimeters between these because you see that that these kind of touch here. But I got tired of printing this. I needed to move on to other things. And then again, these I've offset these to the back. Now, one of the things to kind of tricks that I sort of discovered uh, to adjust a little bit for the thickness, because not all the stocks on these are all the same thickness. Most of them are, but it's like this one. The stock is skinnier. So what I did is I ended up, and I had to for this one anyway, is print with supports and I didn't clean the supports out perfect and it only printed it in the center I don't know if I can show show that but there's still a little bit of support in there so it actually makes it pretty it's snugger for this one uh, to go in and then uh, since I've been putting it in and out a lot it's kind of worn out but it, you kind of get the idea but anyways you see see how this works um, and this actually, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this version. Again, I'm going to, on the Thingiverse version I put out, I'm going to push, put another two millimeters between here, and I think I'll, I'll be fine, because it fits, but it just fits. And so I, I'll push these out. Um, I wanted to be careful on these to how much I could push out before I started getting too support crazy, because this is one of the things that I wanted to experiment with. Because you might think this is a big hunk of plastic, but if I knock a bunch, if I knock a hole in this piece of plastic, I actually add more plastic because of the shell here making the loop, and then also more travel time. So, so actually, um, when you think you're trying to save plastic, you're really costing yourself plastic in design, and that's something to really think about as you're creating something. How much plastic are you going to use? How much machine travel time is there going to be? Because this is one of the pieces. This eats up a lot of machine travel time, mainly because of this um, pegboard style here, because I've got two, two shells here, two shells here, and a very small amount of infill. And so that takes a lot of time. Then when it comes to this piece, again, I printed these at like 10% infill. So there's not a lot, but it's still a lot of travel area. And the thing is, the more circles and holes you add, you start increasing your travel area. So you kind of win in one area and you knock out in another. So it's kind of like photography aperture versus shutter. You always have one versus the other. So anyways, I thought that was kind of an interesting little tip, um, if you will, when you're designing things, to kind of think about that dynamic. How much surface area, how much is your travel time going to be? Um, you know, because a lot of times, you know, uh, you kind of get surprised at the print. So, anyways, I'll have this out on Thingiverse. Hopefully you found this interesting. Um, my little bit trials, tribulations, and my uh, admission to a fetish. Uh, but anyways, uh, I have a new fetish now, printing dial indicator holders. Oh, geez. Anyways, hopefully you found this enjoyable. If you did, hey, smash that thumbs up button. I greatly appreciate it. I'll remember you sometime or another. Uh, subscribe button is going to be over there. Swag shop up there, of course. Hit me up in the comments below. Um, are there any type of tool holders you'd like me to design for you? Um, you know, because probably if you have the tool, I have the tool too. So it could come in handy, and I'm happy to take a look at it. So cheers. See you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.